forever. I open my mind and start to see my brothers and sisters, not obstacles. Buses are never late, rain does not fall just to piss me off or make me sour. Inheriting inherent possibility. Every trial has the stuff of greatness. When ready to endure all for the truth, I humbly pursue absolute hope and joy. Trusting in the power behind it all, when I cannot make sense of it for myself, I let go of all preconceived notions and feel an occasional surge of faith. Secure in the proof of what I live for, won't tear up like a bard, I am solid. Though eager to get where I want to go, I willingly await eternity. Never so excited for what might be next. Promise fulfilled when I let myself. Let myself be loved as I love. And even more than I dared to dream. Unity formed in, forged in refining fire. Anointing oil, sacred water cleansing. Indelible mark, undeniable sign. Blessed beyond what I ever believed. And as uh, Brenda mentioned, I've uh, been in very involved with Scarborough Arts over the years. And last year I was the juror, and this year I uh, submitted some poetry to it, and this one was uh, a juror's choice. And this is to the point. The best poems are written to be read by anyone, meticulously crafted over a period of time, to seem written quickly and simply. The best moments in life are the result of years of preparation, passing by in the burst, causing change even if you are not ready. Before you realize they have happened, they have happened and stay with you forever. And uh, next month, I'm, uh, or in December, I'm Artist of the Month uh, for Scarborough Arts, and uh, they're going to. Uh, show my poem when my worlds collide as part of that. Uh, last year, the League of Canadian Poets posted it during uh, National Poetry Month in April, and now I'm an associate member. And this came about as I went to a performance of Wind in the Leaves Collective. If you don't know who they are, you need to find out. Just fantastic work by Charles Smith and Kevin Ormsby, and, and a whole host of other people. And, and uh, Kevin said to me that I was going to be so inspired by the creative performance that I was going to write a poem. I'm like, no, I'm very tired, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, I wrote the first draft of this on the subway and then later got to perform this with Win and Louis Collective. And this is When My Worlds Collide. My world was always meant to come together, to have flow, unity, and coherence. Even as a little boy, I lived in many worlds. Problems always would arise when they would collide, especially when I forced them to. Now I live in that flow, embrace my reality, the uniqueness of who I am. I accept the differences of all the worlds in which I walk. I love each one of them individually, as well as part of a collective blessing. Now when my worlds collide, there is no confusion, no fear, no resentment. And I am free to be myself, not the guy I am within any crowd. Now I can try to help make the world the kind of place I have always wanted to live in, now that my life has begun. Thank you very much. Uh, five years ago, uh, I uh, had my first poem published in the uh, Toronto Quarterly, or it was my first publishing, it wasn't my first poem. Uh, in uh, the Toronto Quarterly issue four, and uh, recently it was published again by the Ontario Poets Society in Versifier, and this is me with you. And it's also in my book. Three of the next four poems are in my book. All day climbing the corporate ladder, up all night treating the pain, sleeping late on alternate Saturdays, wondering why it is all in vain. The blanket seems longer than it really is, without a second set of legs, another body, to pull it out of the covers, from under the mattress, to soak it in hot, cold sweat. Filling myself with emptiness, the things men do to define themselves, to get set apart by acting the same, when all I need is to be me with you. 
With you, it's always like a dream. The rest, a nightmare I must wake up from. I will have the reality for which I yearn. Until then, both ends of the candle will burn. Thank you very much. At that point, I was really, really into rhyming couplets to end the poems. And uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Uh, this poem was a poster in New Zealand. I, was, I am a mental health advocate. I was asked to write a depression poem by uh, uh, Phantom Bill Stickers. They uh, put up posters all over New Zealand, and they put up some in America. And one of these days, I've got to fulfill my obligation to put some up in Canada. And I'm Facebook friends with Robert Pinsky because of this, as well as with Jim Wilson, the founder of Phantom Bill Stickers. And this, this is the poem that was my poster, and it's Teenager. Look out the wind-blown window, through the ever-green tre tree gone bare. Sun unseen lights the gray sky, a air so cold even time is slowed, until a bitter, vengeful gust threatens to take down the tree, the snow-covered roof of the house, all which is on the horizon. Try to sink deeper under the covers, and feel secure in knowing this is the most peaceful moment of the day. Thank you very much. I wanted to sort of recreate the uh, night where we launched our Lyrical Miracle books together, so I wore this shirt, and I decided <laughs> since I'm going to wear this shirt, I'm going to read a couple of Toronto Maple Leaf poems. It's also appropriate because one of my old friends were celebrating his birthday later this evening, and of course that will also entail uh, having a few uh, carbonated beverages and watching the Leaf game. And uh, this one uh, is not in Scarborough songs, but Mick Burst says it's my best haiku. Uh, it's uh, bleeding blue and white. Early season's hope becomes autumn's discontent. My captain falls down. <laughs> For any of you who care, Dion Phaneuf is probably the worst captain in the history of the <laughs> And uh, this poem just came to me, uh, this is also in Scarborough Songs, this poem just came to me and I just decided I want to write a poem about three guys watching a Leaf game. And uh, this, is, this is Buzz. Already trapped inside, as more snow pounds the cellar window, false sense of security from being dumped on, yet being warm. Three men related because they married three sisters, completely in lack of a sense of comfort, of commonality, beyond the standard conversation, the eternal frustration, the local pro hockey team. Realizing they have no place to go, so they had better get along. <laughs> what we need, the oldest one ventures, rubbing his beard bloated advent, is a power forward with some upside. What we need, the next one interjects, as he favors his balding pate, is a number one defenseman, not on the downside. The other one isn't sure what to say. He's not a hockey guy. He's had too much to drink. The youngest one in the group. But he is smart and wears thick glasses. He decides to state the merely obvious. What we need, with a sense of surprise and shock, is a goalie who can make a save in the shootout. They grunt and groan, guzzle their drinks, <laughs> belch and break wind, rub bare toes and shag carpet, knowing they are all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, just two more, and you're not going to be able to get out of here without me reading one political poem. Uh, this was uh, uh, sort of came to me when I was getting involved with 100,000 Poets, and with the International Festival of Poetry of Resistance. And uh, it was a confluence of a bunch of things. Uh, I was doing a lot of reading of Milton Acorn, sort of getting involved with the gang of people I call the Milton Acorn Posse, who I know Helen knows quite well as well. People like Terry Barker and James Deal, and Ken Bowman. And, uh, and then they came out with that Volkswagen commercial where they were reading the poem If by Richard Kipling. So out of all of this confluence came order with a shout out or two to Richard Kipling. I'm not here to change the world order, nor interested in revolution, just evolution, where we all grow and work together to help bring order to the world. If anyone doesn't have enough to eat anywhere in a world full of plenty, 
If anyone cannot be all they desire to be, grow and become the divine design. If anyone does not have access to health care, essential service is a basic human right. If anyone does not live in security, the dignity and respect of their humanness. Even I, as a white, Anglo, hetero, fully able, highly educated, first world Christian, cannot understand why we won't accept difference and embrace the beauty we all have in common. If you are ready to believe it's time for anyone who realizes these conditions to realize these conditions, from the ones you love the very most to the one you think your worst enemy. If you are ready to believe it's time to change things for the better before they get worse, then yours is the world and everything in it, my sisters and brothers. All the hopes and dreams and pains and sorrows and sufferings and joys, you are now part of it, especially if you weren't before. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just going to end off with one short one. It's the last piece of my book, Scarborough Songs. It's the first poem I got published in the United States. And it's called Epic. My feet set squarely in the present. My eyes firmly focused on the future. The narrow way seems dangerous and hard, wrought with strife and lonely. But when not absorbed in seeming circumstances, or caught up in wavering from side to side, it merely becomes the surest, shortest distance between two points. The past has passed, the present is but a fleeting gift. I will hold out for the future and trust in what it brings. Thank you.